What's good, R&B squad? This is Hada Fruit. I trust that this message meets you guys in good spirits. If you are new to this family, we don't believe that you're here by accident. Welcome. We're happy to have you, and Jesus is, of course, always happier. So as promised, this message is going to be a lot lighter and easier to swallow than the previous message that I put out. And for whom it is for, I do hope that it brings some joy to your heart. I'm going to get right into it. In the dream that I had, in the first part of the dream, there was this lady sitting at a table and she was working on some items. While she was working on the items, she had some plastic twine with her and she was securing the items, tying them together with the plastic twine. Now, at one point, she opens up this packet and the packet has some of the items and they were supposed to be pre-tied. They were supposed to be already secured with plastic twine. However, when she retrieved them from the packet, she realized that the twine had come undone from the items. So, and this woman, there was such patience in her spirit. That was one of the things that I noticed about her. She was meticulous and beautifully patient in the way she worked on these items and in the way she secured them with this twine. So she opens the packet and instead of getting annoyed at the fact that they are not pre-tied with the twine like she thought they were and they had come undone, she just patiently begins to work on it, on securing them again with the twine. And while she's doing that, this gentleman enters the room. Now, mind you, he was nowhere there in the beginning. But he enters the room and he shows her that he has three, and y'all take a note of the number, he has three of the items that came out of the packet that had come undone, that the twine had come away from. And he had already secured them with the plastic twine. So it made her work a lot less tedious. And what I should point out about this woman, and by the way, that was the end of that scene. But what I should point out about this woman is that while she did this work, this man was not present and she was not looking for him. She was just quietly working on securing these items with this plastic twine whether she had help or not. And it was giving Ruth gleaning in the field. That's the feeling that I got from it. Like Ruth wasn't looking for Boaz. She was not, she was just doing what she thought she needed to do to get from one day to the next. She was, she was positioned where God placed her. And that's all that was. And like Ruth, this woman in this dream, she was just doing her job. She was securing these items with this plastic twine, and she wasn't looking for this guy to come in and help her, but he came in anyway, and he showed her that he had already gotten started on what she needed to do. Now, I should also explain the part about her opening up the packet that was supposed to be pre-secured with the plastic twine, and it turned out that it wasn't. That's another thing. This woman did not lose patience when she realized that what should have already been completed needed to be redone. So for whom this is for, there are some things along this journey that you're on that you may have thought were already complete and the Lord may need to take you through it again. But because of your patience, because of the fact that you're so humble and so willing to follow the Lord's instructions, even if at times they seem repetitive, the Lord is going to honor that and he's going to show you that it's not going to take as long the second time around as it took the first time. See, that gentleman entered, and when he entered, he had already secured three of those items. He had gotten a head start on it without her even knowing. He secured three of those items with that plastic twine. And I felt like the Lord was particularly highlighting the plastic twine to me. In the dream, it seemed like the scene zoomed in on the plastic twine, and I know God was using that to send a message. And he had me look up the definition of plastic twine and what it was used for when I woke up. And I found an explanation of what plastic twine is and what it is used for. And I found this to be the most beautiful definition amongst the ones that I found. So let me read it for you. And you will see when I read it, guys, why it's so beautiful. So what is plastic twine? Plastic twine is a strong, flexible cord that is made of plastic fibers or strands. It is commonly used for a variety of applications, including tying and securing items. Let me read that again. What is plastic twine? 
Plastic twine is a strong, flexible cord that is made of plastic fibers or strands. It is commonly used for a variety of applications, including tying and securing items. All right now, praise the Lord. I love the Lord. Y'all, I just love how the Lord will use simple everyday objects to make his point and to effectively make his point. It's the definition of simple but effective. Who would have thought, right? Plastic twine. But anyhow, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to be fascinated with the Lord for the rest of the day about this, honestly. So that's just y'all getting a little glimpse into my fascination. So the Lord led me to Ecclesiastes 4 verse 12, as I knew he would. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So for whom this is for, this is your time to come into union with your person. And you know how you know it's your time? Because you have been just like this woman in this dream and just like Ruth, patiently gleaning. You have not been looking for any help but from anyone but the Lord. You have not necessarily even been looking for your partner. Some of you already know who your partner is and some of you don't know. You've never met them. But just like Ruth, you were positioned, you are positioned where God placed you. You're blooming where he planted you. You're just doing what you have to do from one day to the next. And you're not looking for your partner to do any of the work. You were contented to do what the Lord told you that you needed to do to prune and prepare for this thing, for coming together with this individual. But God is about to surprise you because he's going to present this individual to you now. And when he presents him or her, you will see that this person has already done their share of the work. They've already gotten a head start on the work. This man came in there with three of the items. Look at that number. Three. That's a three-strand cord. He had already secured them with the plastic twine, much to her pleasant surprise. She wasn't even expecting that. So some of y'all, especially if you already know your partner, you're not even expecting that they're dotting their I's and crossing their T's. It might look like they're not, but they are. And they're about to, God is about to present a pleasant surprise to you in the readiness of this person. Also, for some of you, you may be under a little bit of an attack because the enemy knows that it's your time to come in to your marriage union. He's seeing you glowing and all of that. So he's trying to annoy you and he's trying to use some people who are his agents, his human agents, to, to annoy you as well. The Lord led me to Luke chapter 20, verse 18. Everyone who stumbles over that stone will be broken into pieces and it will crush anyone it falls on. So that stone being referenced is Jesus. That's the Lord. That's big brother Jesus who is defending your union. And he is saying that the enemy is the individual who is going to either fall on this stone and be broken into pieces or the stone is going to fall on him and crush him. Either way, he's not going to interfere in the two of you coming together because this is the appointed time. So that was the end of that scene, and that was the explanation for it, and I hope that it put a smile on your face if it was for you. So then in the other half of the dream, in the other scene, I was just sitting by myself in my private time with the Lord, and the Lord was speaking to me. Okay, and I heard the words revive, restore, return, and refund. The Lord said, Revive, restore, return, and refund. Now, when you revive something, you breathe life back into it, you cause it to flourish again. If you get a refund on something, it means that if you put out and you didn't get what you expected in return, then you're going to get exactly what you put out sent back to you so you're going to get a refund and restoration that means that something that you've lost or something that was stolen from you is now going to be put back where it belongs so for whom this part of the word is for the lord is saying that things you've lost things that you thought were gone and lost forever things that you thought were dead, things that look lifeless. He's breathing life back into them. He is restoring them. He is giving you back what you put out. 
Some of you have been putting out and pouring out so much and you haven't been seeing any results. This could be at your workplace. This could be in your personal life, in your personal relationships with the people around you. This could be in your business. This could be in a relationship setting, a romantic relationship setting. You have been pouring so much of you and you have not been seeing anything poured back into you. The Lord is saying that it's about to flow back. It's about to be poured back in. You are getting a refund. You're getting a return on your investment. So look up and start praising the Lord. No matter what it looks like right now, look up and start praising the Lord. I hope that this message blessed someone. I hope it put a smile on your face if it's for you. I love you guys. I will be back with another word as soon as the Lord releases me. Take care.